afternoon. I'm Walter Woodland. I'm uh, running against the uh, professor and lawyer. And I only tell you that because he, he said it first, so I'll, uh, I'll toss it on out there. But um, I uh, live out in Newburgh. I'm a construction worker. I've got uh, four daughters. My youngest is uh, 11 today. Um, and, uh, and my oldest on um, Saturday was 21. So I've got, I've got a pretty good spread. I've been, I've been plugging along for a while and, and watching things. And, and they've been progressively getting worse and worse and worse. And, and uh, I'm looking at, uh, looking at now over the course of events for the last um, 21 years since my first daughter was born. And, and the first major election event I took, took part in was, uh, was a 92 um, presidential uh, election between a uh, uh, big government nominee of the left and a big government nominee of the right and, and Ross Perot. Bear with me for a second. I typically get a little shot of adrenaline a few seconds into a speech and then I shake for a minute or so. But, uh, but um, we uh, have ha had a consistent theme uh, throughout my voting life now that uh, you know, we, we get a, a left side candidate that says that they can micromanage your life and, and, a, and a right a center candidate who says that they'll do a little less micromanagement and they'll do it better. And um, I, I think that a, a third option from the major parties would be nice. Uh, the, the, a third or fourth party option just doesn't make sense in that you wind up with a, with a fractured electorate and, uh, and a tiny portion of the population electing, uh, electing their representation. So uh, I, uh, I jumped into this race to try and, and steer the conversation a little bit, try and uh, try and form the, the, the questions that were, that were being asked and, and see if we can actually get from the Republican Party a Republican nominee that, that represents um, sound government, constitutional government, um, not someone who, uh, who, who's going to get in front of you folks and and campaign and make the promises about all the things that they're going to do and, and they're going to go to Washington and, and fix. Um, it, it should be clear by now that uh, nobody goes to Washington to fix anything. They go to Washington, they pile on new regulations, they make new rules, and, uh, and things get worse. And, and then we wonder why. Um, simply isn't possible to go to, to D.C. and manage the lives of American citizens. Uh, D.C. has a uh, has a set of rules. Uh, they're contained in 17 pages in my little book here about the things that they can and cannot do, and uh, it's important that we uh, that we get back to that. That they extract themselves from so many of the tasks that they've undertaken and assumed the roles that they've assumed for themselves. Um, last week, I heard uh, a candidate from here in Yamhill County for the commission uh, referring to, or sorry. Washington County Commission, um, referring to Washington County as the breadbasket of Oregon, that uh, it's an incredibly productive county that has a, a lot of business and a lot of revenue, and um, that uh, he was somehow lauding it, but it seems to me problematic that money comes out of this county, goes to state level, and gets spent on things that don't benefit Washington County. It gets sent down to the, the goofballs in Portland so they can build bike paths and and uh, toy trains, things of that sort. Um, we'd be better off keeping, keeping things local, that we, that we elect politicians, not politicians, sorry, that's a bad word. We elect represent, representation, statesmen, at the local level, at the state level, at the federal level, county level, I'll jump that in there too, that uh, the recognize the limitations of government, that its purpose is to set up the, uh, the outside parameters of what's allowed in society, and then from there, uh, making sure the rule of law is enforced equally, and, uh, and that there's a stable environment where citizens can interact, create business opportunities, and, uh, and, and grow and thrive. Um, I can't imagine talking for eight minutes, so I'm going to close here on one note. Um, the uh, history of the Senate was interesting, but I, I missed, or it wasn't said that uh, that originally the Senate was uh, the senators were uh, selected by the state legislatures. I.
think it can be shown that uh, the purpose for that was that uh, the states had sovereignty and that they expected their senators to jealously guard that sovereignty from federal encroachments. I, th I think it would be wise to get back to that standard that, uh, that states defend their own sovereignty in the Senate and, and, uh, and guard against federal encroachments and federal mandates. That's uh, I'm Walter Woodland. Thank you much. Thank you.